Hello and good day everybody. My name is Nelvin Amos for Sending Technologies Tutorials. In this video, we will learn how to create a simple online exam system using the CSERP.NET MVC technology. As you can see, we have three important topics. The first point is the demo presentation. The second point is project documentation. And the third is implementing what we have studied from the first and second. All right, let's move on to the first point that is presenting a demo of the tool. It has online exam system on the top. Users will choose the, the test name, put in their name, put in their email address, put in the phone number. Well, I can put any number here, it's not validated. I hit submit. Before I begin the test, the tool will give me information about the exam, some instructions that I need to adhere to. The test duration, which is 20 minutes. A total question, 14. And when I hit the register and start button, the test will start. So if you hit here, you see the question number one is of type multiple checkboxes, so I can choose any answer. The second type of question is a radio button, which is only single choice, so I can only choose one out of this. And there are different other type of questions where I can put in descriptive answer, maybe code or something that will be the answer for this question. And if I wanted to save any of the changes or any of my answers, I have to click on this blue button that says save and next that should save my answer I can always go back and change the answer if I wanted to this next and previous button are just navigators so they will really not save it but they will help navigate to the next question and you also notice here that there's a small timer that keeps running this is done using JavaScript and we will learn about how we do this in the videos to come all right, so this is about the front end of the test system. As an admin, you have control panel where you can add questions. At the time of adding questions, you can choose what type, of, what category the question belongs to, how complex it is, the question type, how many points, the actual question. And there are other features where you can also review the exams. So you can choose the exam that you wanted to review. You can show results. It will show you the, the list of uh, people who have registered for the exam, like their names here, registration ID, the token ID, the test name, the dates when they registered, and the dates when it ends. If you want to review the answer of any one of these test takers or any you know, one of the students, you click on one. It shows you what was the answer that was submitted by the user. So you can hit on next and you can you know, evaluate the user if their answers are right or wrong. Now there are other screens in the control panel which will be able to calculate the total score, uh, compute the value based on ratings and a few other logics that we will be applying on this tool. I will not show this at this moment, but we will discuss this after we analyze and plan the tool. All right. So I wanted to move on to the second part of the topic, which will be project documentation. OK, so let's start with creating a project using Microsoft Visual Studio 2015. Click on File, New Project. Choose the web template as we done at uh, web application. Now, for those of you who does not have a 4.5 framework installed in it, even if you choose 3.5 or 4.0, it should still work because we do not use any advanced feature of the .NET framework for this uh, video. I'll name this as online exam system. And click on OK. Choose MVC, there it is. I do not want any authentication on this project, so I'm going to have to choose no authentication. Click on OK. All right, so Visual Studio will be creating some scaffolded pro uh, folders and data preparing for the project. 
Dum 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 dum. Online exam system. All right, so there we go. We've got a project. Let's see what we have here. Just a pretty familiar face, right? Nothing strange about this. We have abstract, content, controllers, models, views, scripts, folders. Now, um, we wanted to build this project on top of uh, SQL Server using Entity Framework middleware. So let's install Entity Framework. Choose data, Edio .NET Entity Framework. Let's call this exam model as the file name. All right, so we have few options. I'm not going to talk details about this. Let's choose designer from the database because I already have a database created for this one. We hit next. So choose a connection, my server name. It's in my local system and SQL Server. Let's say this is test user. Password, I want to save the password in the configuration file. And the database name is in dev001. Let me see if I can get it connected. Yes, connection is successful, click on OK. Now it asked me if I wanted to save it, so let's say yes. I wanted to save the password in the configuration file. This is the entity name. Go ahead. Choose what entity framework, 6.0. Next. All right, so I have a uh, few tables already created here. We will talk about them as and when we reach the stage. For now, I just wanted to import all of them. And the model namespace is this. And finish. Okay, so the entity models are generated. Let's spend about two or three minutes to explain the, the, the database design and the relationship between each of the entities. Let's begin with test. This is the master table probably because almost every table in the database gets connected to this test. A test has an ID, the test name, description, whether it's active, and how long do you expect the test to be in minutes. We also have another master table which is question. Question, each question will have an ID connected to a master table which is question category by a foreign key, question category ID, question type, which is a text. Well, this as well can be a, a master table, but I do not want to complicate this design so much. So I store the question type, whether it's radio, multiple types or text box in plain text format. Question ID, which is actually the question, which will store HTML text. Exhibit ID, let's not worry about this, we're not using this, and the points for this question and whether it's still active. Now, every single question has a choice that is an answer, which are options that are given to the user. So it's the ID, the question ID as a foreign key, the labels, that is a text that gets displayed, and the points carried by this choice in terms of weighted percentage. Now, how do you assign these questions to the test? We have a table which is test maps question. There's an ID, the test ID, the question ID, the question number. All right, so uh, there's slight, something that I wanted to mention. Why do I, do I have these two numbers? This question ID is the identity number of the question on the table. The question number on the other hand is the question number of the question on the test. So if, if you have a repository of let's say 500 questions in all in this system and the test question and the question ID is 500 it can still have question number one for this test because it may be the first question on this test right all right and we have another one which is question maps duration uh, this is to track how long a user takes to finish a particular question or how many minutes a user stay in that question. It's a little complex on how the calculation logic works, so I'm not going to discuss so much in details. We have another one, the last one, which is the test maps paper. So this is the, this is the table where the answers of the users are saved. We have the ID, the registration ID. Okay, uh, we'll talk about this in a bit. Every user has to register for the test, right? And then the test X question ID, which is the question ID of the test, and the choice ID, that is the answer ID that is chosen from this one, and the answer, which is provided by the user, plus the marks scored. 
So when, whenever an answer is saved, the tool will automatically compute the marks that is scored for this answer, whether it's zero, whether it's 10% of the question, whether it's 50%, and it will be automatically saved in this column. Now coming to the, the user part of the tool, I have a table called student. Well, we could have named it as user instead of students because we store every single user of the tool here. ID, name, an access level of the user, the email, the phone, and the pass has. Maybe it's just for the password. We don't use it. Maybe we don't use it. So access level here will tell us whether the user is an admin or a standard user. So if it's 100, it's a normal user. It's a 500, it's an admin, probably something like that. And then we have registration. Every user has to register for the test. They have ID, student ID. The test ID he registers for, and the registration date, and a token, and the expired time. Now, why do we use a token? That's a different thing. Okay, so um, the reason why I use a token is because I do not want to pass all these IDs, or test IDs, or student IDs in plain text format. So I use a token instead. So uh, this is also a concept that is a property planned in case you wanted to use this in your production environment. Maybe you can have a combination of some, some authentication keys or passphrase or something, generate some hash out of it, and you can store that information in this token and use that to pass an in and out around so that you can you know, pull out that we're talking about this particular registration. In this tool, I'm using GUID, which is nothing but an unique identifier in SQL terms. What is the token expired time? This is basically the test duration in minutes. So it will always be, say for example, if a test is for one hour, that's 60 minutes, expired time will be 60 minutes after the registration date. Okay, and one other thing that I wanted to mention about the student is about the access level. Do not get confused between different form of .NET authorization and authentication that we have, right? Because regardless of what authorization that your corporate or your enterprise application uses, let's say passport authentication, forms authentication, Windows authentication, or Facebook, or whatever, you still need to bind the test you still, need, you still need to register someone for the test, right? You still need to register the answers of the user to something. So you still need this information regardless whether you wanted to store the access level in this tool or not. So um, that's just an added explanation for some people who may have thought, oh, why do I need to use this when I already use some security? All right, no, you still need this. Maybe you wanted to remove this access level. That's a design concept. But yes, you still need this table. So that covers everything that we need to know about the entity relationships. In our next video, we will talk about how we can implement this design in the C-sharp code.